Welcome to the Gayla Scrivener Show. I am so glad you're here. You're in the right place if you're looking for ideas and inspiration to start and grow your own small business. But not just any small business, a work from anywhere business. Now, just because you're a small business owner doesn't mean you think small. No, on the contrary, you think big. You've got big dreams, you've got big ambitions, but you're just stuck. I broke away from the nine to five grind and was stifled by a cubicle to create a work from anywhere lifestyle. Having the freedom to work from practically anywhere is a cool feeling, but here's the thing. It doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen without work, but all the time and the effort, the learning and the stretching is so worth it. Now, every week in this podcast, I'm sharing my experiences that I've had in growing my business and achieving the work from anywhere lifestyle. You too can experience wonderful adventure and freedom as you live life on your own terms. You know, the other day I was catching up with an old friend of mine and our conversation sparked the topic of this week's show. She belongs to a multi-level marketing company and sells things like lotions and essential oils and other bath and beauty products. And she's been doing it for quite some time, but she feels a little stagnant in her growth. Now, I know a lot of individuals who are involved in network marketing companies. There are many mixed feelings out there about network companies. Some say they are scams and really look down on them. And others believe they are a quick fix to financial freedom. And I don't think either one is true. If you're not familiar with a network marketing company and what it is, it's companies such as Avon or Amway. Those are the oldest ones that I know. Mary Kay. Mary Kay's been around for a long time. doTERRA. Young Living, those are a couple of essential oils companies. Jordan Essentials, 31, that's just to name a few. There are hundreds of them. And generally, you invest into the company by purchasing usually some sort of starter kit. And from there, you are an unsalaried sales representative. And it's up to you to sell the stuff and earn a commission. You are encouraged to bring on additional sales reps because you not only earn a commission on what you sell, the products you sell, but when you have someone on your downline, you earn commissions on the products they sell as well. So in short, if you are involved in one of those companies, compensation is of a pyramid structure. The more reps you have signed on underneath you and the more reps they have signed on underneath them and the more that they sell and they sell and, you know, going down the pyramid, the more you earn. You know, some are very much against this multi-level marketing company structure. Some think it's a scheme. Folks that are involved in MLMs sometimes get a bad rap, but I don't think they should. It's been my experience in networking in my local community with many different types of business owners, many of them whom are involved in MLMs, and hearing these mixed signals or these mixed messages on some love it a lot and some are totally against it and don't take those representatives seriously as a legitimate business. And some professional networking groups don't even allow individuals, some of them don't even allow individuals belonging to an MLM to even join. And uh, professional networking groups are a collection of business owners that come together for the purpose of passing referrals and they're very structured and there's dues involved and it's kind of unfortunate because some people don't believe them to be and i'm doing air quotes here uh to be a real business but here's my perspective and my personal experience with an mlm or with the whole structure of that first of all i believe that belonging to an MLM like Avon or Mary Kay or um, doTERRA, whatever, can be a fantastic work from anywhere business. But it's been my observation that those new 
to an MLM are saying those words that they're running a business, but in reality, they're still stuck operating in employee mode. Their mindset is simply not there to the point of actually running a business, but it's a great learning environment. But second, I failed miserably at an MLM, and here's why. I'm going to tell you my story on that. I knew even before joining that it wasn't for me, but I did it anyway. I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Here's what I believe, and with all my experience, that regardless of what you're selling or what MLM that you might be involved with, it's not about the products. It's not. The products are a tool, but why on earth? Let me go back here. The products are a tool to help you along to earn an income, but why on earth would someone want to purchase from you when they can purchase the product from another rep or even get a similar product when they go to, you know, a regular store instead of going out of their way to try to contact you? So why on earth would someone want to purchase from you? What sets you apart from the other reps that belong in that same MLM? The obvious answer is what sets you apart is you. Why owe you? You. You are an individual. Your thoughts, your experiences, and everything about you is helpful. And you can share your knowledge, your experience, and how that product is helping you in your life. Now, it seems totally obvious to me that anyone, everyone, Everyone who's involved in an MLM should build a personal brand around themselves and just share their experience and share their knowledge. They should be sharing their stories and sharing their research and their opinions. They will attract those folks that their message resonates with. They build a following. Now, the products of their MLM more than likely would align nicely to their lifestyle and would easily be woven in their online conversations and their online story. Now, what is the foundation of building your personal brand? Building your work from anywhere lifestyle? You must have a website, remember? A digital home. And from there, you create consistent content through a blog, video, or audio. Then you broadcast your message through social media and email. You should have a consistent content marketing strategy where you share your expertise, your discoveries, your perspectives, all that stuff, allowing people to get to know you, and they'll trust you, and then they'll buy from you. It was Zig Ziglar, I believe, and I'm going to get this quote off a little bit, but what you're doing in selling is it's a transfer of your enthusiasm to someone else. And when you are doing your consistent content marketing, you are all the time finding avenues and ways to make it easier for your friends, your tribe to buy from you. And whatever those avenues may be to make it as convenient and as easy as possible. Because remember, they can go and get a similar product, you know, when they're out and about at, at the mall or what have you. It's not about the products. It's about belonging to your world and following you in what you have to say and what your expertise is. And just belonging to your journey. But more times than not, this is what I see. I see most people who I know who sell any product, any product whatsoever through an MLM, they hide behind those products. And they're just, it's, it's like they're just pushing this, this stuff. And I don't really want to know much about the product or I just don't get how it could fit into my world. And to me, it seems like everywhere I turn, it's just that I'm asked to buy this stuff that I just don't want nor need. And I remember uh, this one lady was selling like bulk laundry detergent. I mean, like gallons of this stuff. 
And I'm like, I'm not interested. And she kept going on being this membership on on this bulk stuff. And I said, I am not your ideal client. And I don't want to sell it. I live in a 38 foot RV. I have no place for this vat of laundry detergent. And my laundry in my RV is so tiny. It, it just didn't fit for me. And I got irritated. But she just like, man, I need five more sales this month. And come on, come on. And I was like, no. Well, you can share it with your family. No. I am not a bulk purchaser. I do not go to Sam's Warehouse. I do not like buying in bulk um, because that just does not fit my lifestyle. I live small and I get the stuff that I need to when I need to. When you're in that mode of, man, I got to sell, I got to sell, I got to sell, you're pushing people into a corner. And it's, it's highly irritating. I'm just going to say it. It's just irritating. And I know that it's very uncomfortable. Most people are uncomfortable with the sales process. But if you set up a system where you are creating valuable information and you're creating a tribe, so to speak, through your personal brand, you're attracting the exact people that you need and that you want to build your business. And the products that you believe in and that's helping your lifestyle, whether it's, I don't know, bulk laundry detergent, you are going to be sharing tips of how you live your lifestyle and how this product has helped you. The product is like um, an ancillary type thing, and you're able to sell it through your messages. I had gotten involved with an MLM, and I really, really shouldn't have. And I'm going to tell you this story. This is, this is my Mary Kay story. Very early on in creating my business, Scrivener Solutions, which is a virtual assistant business, I've built a team of folks that work behind the scenes that help small business owners with their content marketing. But at first it was just me and me, myself, and I. Yes, my husband Robert was involved in that, but I was the one that was getting it launched. And I had never started a business ever before. I was nervous. And this was the most vulnerable time, I believe. It was within the first year, year and a half of me starting Scrivener Solutions. And I was involved in uh, professional networking groups and went to my regular weekly meetings. And this particular community group did allow members of or business owners that were heavily involved in MLM companies. There were a lot of them. Um, but then there were a lot of non-MLL M- LM companies. And I was selling my virtual assistant services. In my networking group, I had a Mary Kay representative. And she invited me to one of their Mary Kay parties. And I hadn't been to one since I was a teenager. I thought it would be a good idea to kind of do a girly thing and learn how to put on makeup again. I thought, you know, that's a very good thing. Skincare is very good. I need to uh, maintain a professional look during this transition from full time uh, work gig, you know, a corporate job to diving in just full strength into entrepreneurship and creating Scrivener solutions and not having the safety net. And um, I was just unsure of myself. I was vulnerable. I wanted something to. Mm, make me feel better. And so I went to a Mary Kay party and learned the techniques and and things like that. And I was friends with this Mary Kay representative. They'd always have Mary Kay rep like parties, I guess you can say, uh, getting all the reps together so that they could have their community do learn business building techniques and get enthusiastic and and all of this and that that type of group seemed like a great place to be I I was like you know I want to feel like I belong to a place and and maybe I need to 
feel like I'm in an organization again and that I could work for certain goals and uh, for, for somebody else. And there's these, in essence, staff meetings, and they're very enthusiastic. And there's all these women that are empowering each other. And maybe this is the way I need to go. So I became involved in and went to a few of these meetings. And you didn't have to be a Mary Kay rep to go to these meetings. But the purpose of those non reps that were there was it was a recruiting mechanism. So I was in a room with a couple of Mary Kay reps. And I felt like I was in a high pressure sales scenario. Like I told you a little bit earlier, this was a very, very vulnerable time for me. And I was very unsure with myself. But I did know, I did know that I had it just within my gut. It's like, I don't want to be a Mary Kay rep because this is so different than what a virtual assistant is. I mean, if if the product was something that was virtual assistant-esque, it would seem to make sense to go ahead and sign up. But this is makeup. I I don't even know how to put on makeup very well. I want to know how to look good when I am in professional situations. I want to learn some techniques to maybe, hey, maybe I need to do this and look better on camera. But being so involved or being enthusiastic about makeup, that's just not me. So I'm in this room with two higher level Mary Kay reps. I felt backed into the corner and it's like, you know, it's not that much of an investment and you can do this and do this and um, this will help you grow your, your other business because there are so many other reps in here and they'll need a virtual assistant, but they're not going to use a virtual assistant unless you're a Mary Kay rep. And I was like, well... That does sound logical. I don't have very many clients right now. Maybe this is a, an avenue for me. But I don't want to sell makeup. I just don't. But maybe, maybe I'm looking at this all wrong. Maybe I need to take a leap and learn something new and become involved. And so I did. I signed up and I got this kit this bowling bag looking thing that had a ton of makeup in it, um, starter kit. From there, felt a little pressure to get some inventory because you got to have inventory because when somebody wants something, then they need it right then and there. And then do parties and get folks enthusiastic to come to these parties and put on makeup. But you know what? You know, they, they said to get started with friends and family and bless my friends and family heart. Thank you guys for entertaining me through this through this time. Um, because, of course, friends and family, they're going to feel sorry for you. So they're going to come to the party. But then they're going to feel sorry for you. They may or may not want to buy something. That was just an awkward situation. And my friends and family that I invited to these things, they're very much like me. They're not really into makeup. A few of my my closest family members, they have very sensitive skin, and Mary Kay made them break out. I was mortified. Oh, and then others are like, you know, I like all natural stuff, and I don't really. I yes, Mary Kay has a natural line, but using that product was not aligned for what they believed in and what they liked. I had no enthusiasm. I had no story of trying to sell these products. It did not fit in with my personality, my personal brand. I don't look back on that experience with remorse or a ton of regret. It's just like, huh, I recognize that I kind of caved through a vulnerable time in my life. And I did learn from that experience. If you have the opportunity, you need to read her book because it's a very inspirational book. And I like the Mary Kay organization. I do because it empowers so many women and there's so many women that are transformed. And I love seeing that, but it just wasn't for me. I abandoned the idea. I cheerlead the others that I I know that's in the organization. What I found out and what I recognized 
after making the investment that, hmm, it's an investment I probably shouldn't have made, but it was a learning experience. However, that was kind of an expensive lesson. If I wanted to, I could really focus on the Mary Kay. I think I could have learned to become enthusiastic, but that was going up the stream, I believe. And I think I could have made it work, but I would have had to focus so much time and effort to it and also lose focus on building Scrivener Solutions. And since Scrivener Solutions was so young, and that's where I wanted to go, I believe that when you're trying to grow a business, you need to focus on on one and not both. Because to me, in my mind, and, and you may, as an outsider, see that there could have been alignment. But for me, I didn't believe that there was a connection that I could incorporate selling makeup into my virtual assistant business. I just couldn't. And so it was like building from scratch two separate businesses. So I abandoned the Mary Kay. Let me uh, mention my friend who sells the lotions and other bath products. I've known her for years, and I don't have the opportunity to see her very often. And it is extremely difficult to buy anything from her unless I see her in person. So that's the drawback of me as a customer because I'm going to have to put up a lot of effort to track her down. And then from them as a retailer, that is a drawback because since it's not convenient for me, I might go somewhere else because I don't see her physically very often. See, I'm so busy and during my office hours, I certainly don't want to think about restocking my aluminum-free deodorant. You know, my mind is filled with so many other things and I kind of compartmentalize that and don't even deal with that until I really need to. The, the idea might pop into my mind late in the evening when I'm messing around on my tablet and then I might want to order right then. And I find it frustrating on trying to search on how to even do an order. And most of the time, if I had purchased something um, like a, a vitamin or, or whatever through someone face-to-face, I'm tempted to just do what's convenient for me on reorder, which is uh, I'll pick up something similar when I'm out and about. And you know what? That's what all of us tend to do. We do what's easy and convenient. We need to do that. We need to do what's easy and convenient for us because we have such full lives, right? Now, when I was talking to this friend... And she was so enthusiastic because she's taking a course from one of the top reps in her organization about how she uses Pinterest and how she's selling a ton of stuff through Pinterest. She asked if I thought Pinterest is better than Facebook. Well, my opinion about social media is just this. The platform that you use and communicate through on a consistent basis will be the one that works for you. If she's growing tired of Facebook and feeling like she's hitting, you know, a brick wall with it, and if she believes that focusing on Pinterest will be helpful, then I think that's wonderful. The biggest thing is that you need to believe and that you need to use it. Pinterest isn't the only answer that she's looking for to growing her business. The highly successful rep in her company that's teaching the course isn't just building her platform on Pinterest. I challenged my friend. I asked her, does that rep have a website? Does she produce consistent content like a blog or a podcast or video? Does she hold consistent workshops or events? It's a combination of a solid foundation of marketing practices of having a personal brand website, creating consistent content, and communicating your message through email and social media. Pinterest is just one piece of the puzzle. See, my friend told me that that rep is doing all of those things and she's making it easier for her followers to purchase from her. She's also making a platform that's aligned with her personal brand to help teach people, to educate them, to inspire them, and then they are drawn to purchase the products. 
Now, I truly believe that despite my failure of selling Mary Kay products, that one way to build your work from anywhere lifestyle, a very good way would be to become involved in a multi-level marketing company. But can you get rich being involved in an MLM? I think you can, but you have to have the right mindset. Here's what you should remember. It's not about the product. It's all about you. It's you and what you have to offer. And what you have to offer is your experience, your perspective, your knowledge, and everything that's involved in your journey. Whatever you have to sell, whether it's a product or a service, you must believe in it. It's so much easier. See, I like Mary Kay products, but I did not believe that I could be successful in selling it. I didn't have that belief. And and I did not have that connection of how it could really be an asset to or a um, ancillary service to Scrivener Solutions. There was a disconnect there. It wasn't aligned properly. So since I didn't believe it, of course it failed. Now, why does this matter? It's about the value you bring to the table. Create a personal brand and provide valuable information that revolves around what you believe in. And that that path is so much easier. It becomes a part of who you are and what you stand for. The product is just something that you use to enhance your lifestyle. And therefore, it's so much easier to sell it. Now, if you joined an MLM because of your drive for a healthy lifestyle, and you believe that the power of, let's say, essential oils will help your life in some way, then create a business around the knowledge and your perspective that you are gaining from this health journey. People will seek your advice as to what could help them. Because if it is helpful to you, and you've tried it with your successes and failures, then it may be helpful to them. They will get a connection with you. They have formed a relationship with you through getting to know you through your stories that you share on your blog, your videos, or your podcast. People will be seeking you out. You will become an expert in your niche. The products simply help you achieve the lifestyle you desire. Also, To truly scale your MLM business, you aren't just selling products. You immediately become a leader and an influencer. First, you are a leader and influencer to those individuals who simply need your guidance and want to buy your product. You inspire, you educate, and motivate those folks to want to buy from you. Second, you become a leader and influencer the minute you sign up another consultant to be in your downline. If you want to scale, you become a leader of a team. You must market and communicate to your team to inspire, educate, and motivate them to want to create their personal brand business and sell the company's products. Building a personal brand does take time, but building any business takes time. It also takes work. What is nice about being involved in an MLM is that you don't have to invent a product. And there's already a business name and branding out there. A lot of things are already done for you, but they cannot create your personal brand business. That is totally up to you because you are an individual. You have to find your own way, your own voice. Now, perhaps you're struggling right now to figure out what you should do to get away from your day job because you want a work from anywhere job. You want to create a lifestyle so that you don't have to be tied to one particular cubicle, you know, like I was. And you want to grow and be able to either work remotely for someone or create your own work from anywhere business. Choosing to be involved in a multi-level marketing company may be a great avenue. It's not for everyone, but it may be a great avenue for you to help you get started in the right direction. 
You see, as you set new routines and learn to grow this MLM business, your own personal brand business, ideas will spark and you'll grow your income on your side gig. And then you'll gain confidence. And then as you gain confidence in and these new tasks of building your MLM business becomes routine and then you want to step it up, it'll be easier to take the leap and do your work from anywhere life full time. Now, I do hope that you enjoyed today's episode. If you found it helpful, please do subscribe. I would certainly appreciate it. Now, I'm creating an online community for people just like you who want to take the leap and work from anywhere, but struggle with direction and quite frankly, struggle with some tech stuff too. Now, if you're interested in being a founding member, I highly encourage you to go to galascrivener.com forward slash member. That's G-A-Y-L-A-S-C-R-I-V-E-N-E-R.com forward slash member. Now just put your name and email into the wait list and I'll follow up with you as the details of membership develop. Now thanks for being here with me today and until next time, have a fantastic week.